All right, what's going on, fellas? It's your boy Crucial RC here. Um, once again. All right, as y'all see, I have, I would say, one of the best radios sitting here on my uh, workbench. Whose is it? Come on, man. It's mine. All right, what's going on, fellas? This is your boy Crucial RC here. Um, I'm sitting here with probably, if not the best, probably one of the best radios out. Um, this is the M17 Ultra Responsive System by Samwa. Um, full color LCD display. Um, comes with its own 1S LiPo system. Uh, you know, you can charge it up through uh, micro SD port, I believe. Um, awesome radio, from what I've read about and watched videos about on YouTube. And I've seen a bunch of videos on this thing. Uh, we'll get back to this in a minute. But the reason why we are transforming from Futaba, which is my 4PLS system, which has been a great radio. You know, I, up until recently, I really haven't had any problems with this radio. Um, I run the same type of radio with my uh, fifth scales. Um, not this one, but I have another one just for my fifth scales. Uh, like this is for the XT8. This is for my race, my race uh, buggy and trucky. But the problem I've been having with this thing lately is the fact that it's been unbinding, unbinding with my uh, trucky and my buggy. It happened to both of them. So I actually got to go back through, rebind it, set up my endpoints again, uh, adjust the responsiveness, the speed of the servos, and, the, and turning the radio, the, um, the wheel, and all that. So every time it, it unbinds with my system, I got to redo all that, and I don't find out until I'm ready to run on the track. Then I got to go on YouTube. Um, search on how to bind this thing every time because I forget every time I, that it's happened and it's happened twice how to do it and it's just a pain in the butt so what I was going to do was I was going to get the 4 p.m. system but <clears throat> I also had another Sanwa the MX-6 grab that all right I also had the Sanwa MX-6. Um, I use this right now just for bash and also I use this for my vector. And um, it, I've had, never had a problem with it. Now this is a hundred dollar radio. Um, never had a problem with this. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles, the large LCD, the LCD display screen or, and all that. But I've never had a problem with this radio. This radio has been nothing but the best to me for what it's used for, for bashing and all. Now, that's another thing with the Futaba. It's the main, the only other item I used to basically use on this was the timer. That, for some reason, ain't acting right now. So, like I said, it, it, it was time for this to go because my timer is what I use for um, fuel pit stops. Um. So it's time to go. Like I said, I didn't want to go with the, another cheap MX-6 or equivalent for the Sanwa, but like I said, since I had excellent, um, I got excellent rave, you know, reviews and all for this MX-6 um, radio as I've been using it, you know, I just figured, why not go with Sanwa? So we ended up going with the M17. So let's get all this other stuff out of the way and we're going to do unboxing all right all right so we got all the rest of that stuff out of the way and uh let's look at the box full color box of course um samwa 2.4 um, gigahertz ultra responsive system all right let's see what they got on the back nothing really on the back just a picture of the, the gun and um 
barcodes, stuff like that. Alright, let's uh, get into the box. Alright, so what we got here? First off, that. We got a white box in there. Let's see what's inside here. Alright, so inside this, we have. Looks like uh, some little wheel springs to adjust the sensitivity of the wheel. We have another wheel and two back straps. And I believe one is a, a, a large back strap and a small back strap. Um, grip, whatever you want to call it. It comes with a medium grip on the actual gun from what I'm reading. Alright, so we got an extra wheel in here. I guess I don't know if it, maybe it's a different design than the one that's on there or something, but put this off to the side. Uh, and we have a super small receiver. Now, this is the Sanwa RX491 receiver. This thing is crazy small. It also has the see, we've got the binding, binding jumper in there. And some plugs, I guess, for the unused um, ports to make it waterproof. I think this is a waterproof uh, receiver. Now, let me grab a stock Fataba receiver. You see how, how big this thing is? And it don't look big right here. And when you put it up against this... Sandwire receiver. Let's open this up. It's pretty big. Now, one of the main things, and it's also pretty expensive, I think, too, but one of the main things on here is um I mean look how, I mean look how small this thing is. It fits in the vector. I mean, the vector radio compartment is super small. This thing will fit on here with no problems. But let's, let me open this up, see if I can open this up. Alright, so that's the Fataba. And this is the Sanwa. And this is the R, what is that, the RT, I mean R23GF Fataba. It's half the size, the Sanwa is half the size of the Fataba. Half the size. So that's a big difference in you know fitting in your radio compartment. I should have no problem getting that in there. Let's close that back up. Let's get this Fataba out of the way. And also in here we have looks like a couple triggers. There's some little small parts and pieces. I'm sure I'll figure out what that is for in a little bit. So all this back in this box so it doesn't get lost. And let's get to the main event. So let's pull that out. Alright. So we have another box which looks like it is probably the manual yep warranty information got some nice stickers nice user manual black and white user manual viable whatever you want to call this anything is super thick you can see that no different than the photographers. <clears throat> How to bind the uh, receiver. All right. Put this stuff away.
All right, let's get to the main event for real. This is this is the bad boy, the, the creme de la creme right here. Move that out the way. Open this thing up. All right, now, first off, the filling in my hand. It was good. Now, I'm not sure if it's, you know, much different. I know it does have this nice rubber back strap on here, which, you know, right there feels high end to me. Um, the wheel, right now, I mean, just the way that bounces back, you know, that shows me how that spring is in there. See if I can do it like that. So, now I heard people turn these things down, the responsiveness is down to like 50% when they start running these things. Um, I'm gonna try it regular and see how it goes. Now, we have, uh, what do we got here? We got a button, a pull down button right here on the grip. We have another forward and backwards button right above the grip just to the rear of the trigger, trigger pull. We have a dial here. You have your trim four, two, one, and three. These feel super smooth. All right. Got a nice, nice handle here for carrying. Um, no antenna. So it's all integrated, the antenna's integrated. Uh, what else we got here? We got another button on the, what should be the back of the pistol grip. Where my thumb is on, you know, right now. Um, <clears throat> what else we got here? We got a uh, switch two and three on the back of the unit. This one was a, uh, a momentary switch. The toggles up and down. And then this one is uh, just a button. But let's see. Um, I said it, it. I really can't. I mean, actually, I mean, the Fataba uh, 4 PLS feels lighter, actually. At least feels lighter to me. Um, like, so I'll have to check. Uh, one thing I, oh, I, just, I just noticed that I really do like about the difference between the two is um, the opening for the trigger pull. That's bigger than the opening on the 4 PLS. So. I said, my fingers aren't big, aren't fat, they're long, and this feels a lot more comfortable than the 4 PLS was. I was always felt like I was fighting to get my finger in there. So that's definitely different. Um, <clears throat> I also heard that the radio, I mean, the, the battery compartment is now screwed and has a screw in there and you cannot get that off. Let's grab a, um, let's grab a, Screwdriver. Mm, it would be nice if it had that washer on the screw so that when you unscrewed it, it stayed in the compartment, but. Beat by IQ. All right, so this is a nice, I mean, this thing, I don't know why they even need a screw on this, the way this thing goes in here. It's tight, nice tight compartment. Man, that thing ain't, ain't come out. You gotta force that off. Man. All right. So, we got a LiPo, 1S LiPo, 20. Let's see if you can see that. Let's see if you can see that. Well, that's LiPo 2500 milliamps. Um, it's got an Airtronics plug on it. 
and there is no balance, no balance charge for this. So, I guess you figure one cell, there's no reason to have a balance charge, right? So, it just plugs right in. Got a little plug here in the bottom of the uh, remote. Just plug that back up. See if we can get this back in here. I like, um, it's pretty cool, I like this. All right, so that's pushed back in. Uh, also notice you gotta leave the rubber door open it to make it slide in easily and slide off easily. Alright, let's not forget the screw. Now, let's go charge it up so we can turn this thing on. All right, so here we are charging it up. Got a nice, you know, micro SD plug in. Got the door open, it's got a nice red LED inside there. binding now. So right now we just got the receiver on. Alright. Now you see it's blinking. Alright, so we just got one of my mega servos here. This is actually part of the one that's no good. The side box is no good. And a nickel metal high drive battery here. So right now the receiver's just on. It's just doing a slow blink and uh, we'll power her up the uh, transmitter got that pretty LED display tap that let's go back to the main menu all right we'll tap that go to system scroll down up whatever you want to call it tap that go in the bind tap that all right so all this is right the FH5 Telemetry on, safety link, SHR, and we need to go down to the bottom where it says bind. So we're on bind now, we'll click that. Alright. As you can see, this thing starts to blink fast. Now, supposedly, if it's blinking fast, that means it's talking to it, that means it's binded to it. So now we're supposed to end this bind by canceling back out. All right, and it's supposed to stay blinking fast until we kill it. Turn the battery off on it. All right. And it's supposed to remove the bind plug. All right, and we'll change over the battery. I if I can get this thing out, there we go. Barry back on the top location. We'll turn this receiver back on. And we got the remote on still. So we'll turn the receiver back on. And it should stay constant blue. Let's see. Alright, so we're constant blue now. Now I should be able to adjust the servo now. Probably ain't working because it don't work. So let's change out this uh, servo. All right, so we got my spare low C servo now. So let's turn this on. Oh, you heard that come on. Got the glowing blue light. All right, so we're bind. Did man, we're binded, bound, bind. I bind, I'm bound, I'm bind, whatever you want to call it. All right, so I'm good now. So let's get this and this uh, stuff all taken apart. And we're going to get this receiver put into the truggy.
Guys, so I'm back, man. I got the um the receiver down inside the receiver um tray. Uh, got everything hooked up. As you can see, I got the the blue head Paloma in the truggy now. It's an XT8. I wanted to swap the two out on the cars, but anyhow, this video is about the M17. So let's turn this um radio on. And let's turn the uh the truggy on now. One thing I did notice with this once I hooked these up, the um servos are quite loud, like like a little small chatter or something like that, but everything seems like it's alright. So let's turn this on. Alright, so I don't know if you can hear that, but hear that chatter. It's actually coming out of the throttle servo. Um but it's all good. But what I wanted to show show you guys is the the responsiveness to this thing. Check this out. That's crazy. That's nuts. That's that's to me that's crazy. But I also got um got my spare servos. I mean sorry, my spare receivers. Uh, there's a spot coming straight from Taiwan on eBay. Um, I can't remember the seller, but it came quick. I mean it came faster than my shipments from DDM, tell you the truth. Uh, I think it was like what seven days maybe, five, seven days or something, and it came from Taiwan. So I don't know how they did it, but it came super fast. But um I got my two receivers, one for the uh, XB8 and one for the um, the low C5B. So I'm gonna do that. Also, like I said, with this um this uh, transmitter, it comes with a one cell LiPo battery, all right? So I actually ordered a 5500 milliamp one cell Protec LiPo. So, you know, y'all know what LiPos look like. But you know that'd give me twice the amount of uh, time that the uh, M17 comes with. I think it comes with like a 2300 milliamp battery. But you know, there it is. There's the M17. You know, just my overview. Um, one thing I did notice that was a little pain of a pain of a, in the butt, I guess, is uh, you see where? Let me get me a screwdriver, a little something to point at right here where the name is in there plugging that name in there the xt8 truggy it takes a little bit of time i think it actually took me twice as long as what maybe three times as long as what it needed to take to plug that in there it's a little bit of playing around with the, the scrolling mechanism and all but other than that i mean everything went, went smooth um i got the the lanyard attachment screwed in here um so i have to be able to hang that around my neck you know with the lanyard and um you know that's it man i mean that's this is crazy to me you know that that's crazy that's that's wild but anyhow man you know that's the sandwich m17 for you uh i guess i'll talk to you guys later i guess there's enough information on that man so i'm i'm geeking geeking to get this thing out and try it on, on the track so let me get off this video and uh, hopefully get out to the track soon so I can get y'all some footage. All right? It's your man, Bush. <laughs> it's your man, <laughs> Crucial RC, man. I'll holler at you guys later, y'all. Crucial RC. I'll you guys later. All right, man. I'm out.